Partnership Tax General Concepts Problem 8. This year, individual kale and individual spinach formed Leafy Green Partnership. Kale contributed $60,750 cash and spinach contributed business assets with a $60,750 fair market value. Spinach's adjusted basis in these assets was only $12,150. The partnership agreement provides that income and loss will be divided equally between the partners. Partnership operations for the year generated a $60,000 loss. How much loss may each partner deduct currently and what basis will each partner have in her interest at the beginning of next year? Only consider the basis loss limitation. All right, so here we're focusing on the amount of loss that each partner, we've got two partners, right? We've got kale, an individual kale, an individual spinach, and they own this leafy green partnership. And they are equal partners, okay? To be divided equally between the partners. That's really important. Now, another thing to note is that when we're doing these loss limits, there's lots of different loss limits to consider. There's the basis loss limit. There's code section 465 at risk rules. There's 469 passive activity loss rules. There's also a few other ones out there. Those are the big ones. There's a few others. The only one we need to consider for this problem is the basis loss limit. So if I tell you that, that's what I mean. Okay. So wh what I like to do here, and you know, we can do this a bunch of different ways. And you know we've had other problems where we've talked about allocated items of income, loss, gain, deduction, these types of things. So this, this one obviously builds on others. Best thing to do here is just start off very broad and think about what's going on. So we've got a partnership, right? We've got Leafy Green Partnership. So Leafy Green Partnership, every year of its operations, Leafy Green Partnership has to file Form 1065. File form 1065. Now that form, Leafy Green Partnership does not pay tax. The idea for a partnership is that there's one level of tax and the level of tax at the owner level. And that's because it goes through the schedule K-1. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So on the form 1065, we're told that we have a $60,000 loss. Partnership reports a $60,000 operating loss for the year. $60,000 operating loss. Now, just without considering the two partners and the loss limitation, if we know they're equal partners, all you're going to do is we know there's two partners, right? Leafy Green. So on the Form 1065, we show $60,000 of loss. The two partners that own, right, Leafy Green, remember, triangle denotes partnership. We've got two individuals. We've got circle for individual, kale, and we've got circle for individual spinach. Now I didn't put them in the respective circles this time, but you get the idea, right? You could circle the, them and you put them in the triangle or circle. So on the schedule K1 that gets reported to each of these owners, okay, on the schedule K1 that comes from the partnership to the owners, that's basically to keep track of what the owners need to then report on their form 1040, okay? So that they report on their form 1040 the portion that's allocated. Okay, that's what allowed. Again, we also have to consider this basis loss limit, so we need to consider that for also the Form 1040, what actually can go on the form. Okay, now remember, they're 50% owners. They each own 50% of the partnership. Well, before we consider, before we consider the loss limitation, you simply just take 50% of the 60,000, they each get $30,000. They each get $30,000. And that is how we do this on the Schedule K-1. But that's not necessarily the amount that can be taken on the Form 1040 because then we have to consider the limitations. As I mentioned, there's many different limitations in terms of what whether you can take a loss on your Form 1040 or not and actually report it. The one that we need to consider here is just the basis loss limit. So we're going to do a little limit, little limitation exercise over here on the left. I'll put K for kale and S for spinach. And we have to do a basis determination. So this is at the end of the year. Okay. Now we're told that when they initially formed that kale, I'm sorry, we're told this year that they formed a partnership and that kale contributes $60,750 cash and spinach contributes business assets with a $60,750 fair market value, but only a $12,150 basis. So on formation, on formation, there's no gain or loss by the parties. 
Let me actually put that in the middle. Let's do this rather than on the left side. Do this in the middle. On formation, there's no gain or loss because we're contributing property in exchange for a partnership interest. So that's fine. But the rule is that you must use the basis. Now for cash, for kale, the basis of cash is always the face value. So that's going to be $60,750. So the fair market value is $60,750. The basis is $60,750. There's no difference. For spinach, we're told the fair market value of the assets is $60,750, but we don't care about that. We care about the basis. We're told that the basis of those assets being contributed is $12,150. Again, if you're trying to figure out why we're using the basis, not fair market value, again, because we don't have any tax consequences, the partnership nor the partners, and the idea is you have to roll over the basis as a tax tracking number. Okay? So that is the basis at that time. And that's the basis that they start off with. In the same year, they have a $60,000 loss. $60,000 loss, which makes sense. A lot of businesses, the first few years, they generate losses, and then they roll over and start having business um, income. They don't roll over and start having income, then usually they end. It's why many businesses don't succeed after you know several years and they just decide to, to close up shop. So that is their basis. That is their adjusted basis. $60,750 is the adjusted basis before considering the loss and $12,150. So $60,750 for kale and $12,150 for spinach. So if we have a $30,000 loss being reported, the question is, do we have enough basis? So let's start with kale. If we have a $30,000 loss, we have to have at least $30,000 of basis. Do we? Yes, we've got enough. So all $30,000 of loss can be reported on the 1040 again, assuming that the other basis limitations are met, but we're not worrying about those in this problem. What about spinach? Well, the question is, do we have $30,000 of basis? The answer is no. So how much of the loss can be taken by spinach? The answer is 12,000, sorry, let me put a dollar sign here. $12,150 can be reported by spinach. And then the remaining portion, which is Kale has nothing that carries over. Spinach has $17,850 of loss that carries over to next year. So this is the carryover. The way the carryover works is, let's say next year income is reported. Well, then spinach is allowed to look at this loss basically because the income is then going to be able to go to basis and have enough then, and you can use the loss from previous year to, to basically flow over, and you're allowed to continue to bring that over going forward and going forward and going forward. Now it's better to be able to use it immediately because of time value of money, right? A dollar of tax savings today is worth more than a dollar of tax savings a year from now, right? Under time value of money concepts, but you, at least you still get that benefit. So here, here are the answers for how much loss can be taken by kale and uh, spinach. $30,000, kale can take the full $30,000 loss. Um, Kale's portion. Spinach can take twelve thousand one hundred fifty. It's limited to the basis. And then, if you're asked about how much losses carry over next year, kale has zero because all of it was used. Spinach has seventeen thousand eight hundred fifty dollars of loss that rolls over next year, and we continue to roll over the loss until it's used up. There's one last thing we need to do in the problem. We need to answer based on what the question's asking. What basis will each partner have in her interest at the beginning of next year? We have yet to do that. We've looked at the amount of loss that can be taken by each partner after considering everything in the problem and on the basis loss limit, as well as the base or the, the carryover of loss the next year. What about the adjusted basis? Okay, so let me create a little new area for us. So the basis for each partner, so this is the adjusted basis at the beginning of next year. We of course have, again, we've got um, kale and we've got spinach. So the adjusted basis for next year so spinach, let's start there. Spinach is easy. We had a $12,150 basis. And the idea with basis is that basis is reduced by the amount of loss that can be taken. So if this $12,150 gets utilized on the Form 1040, that's going to reduce spinach's basis down to zero. So spinach's basis goes from $12,150. Remember at the beginning, this is the adjusted basis initially. This is the adjusted basis at the end and also the amount for the beginning of next year. So the adjusted basis initially was 12,150, right? We got that number. We used 12,150 as a loss. Now spinach has a zero basis. Kale 
we had a $60,750 basis and Kale was Kale used 30,000 of that in a loss. We we will use all 30,000. So for Kale, we do 60,750 minus 30,000 and that's going to give us 30,750 is Kale's new basis for next year. And that's how we calculate the basis going forward for the beginning of next year. All right, so that's really everything in this problem. Go back, look through all these items. We determine the amount of loss that can be taken considering the basis limit, the amount of um, carry for, carryover loss that wasn't able to use suspended loss, we call it, and then what is the basis next year.